are now going to do exercise 1011 and this is learning objective 3 and learning objective number 4. What are we doing here? Labor and variable manufacturing overhead variances. Affordable Electronics manufactures medium quality, reasonably priced DVD players. The company uses standards to control its costs. The labor standards that have been set for one player are as follows, and I'm not going to write it out, I'm just going to put it on the screen here. Let's make a note of what our standards are, so that we know. And we have standards for direct labor. We're looking for quantity, price, and of course the quantity times price. Our quantity is 0.2 hours. We're giving it in minutes and hours, but we'll put it all in hours. Quantity 0.2 per output. Standard rate per hour is $15 per hour. So that our standard cost is $3. For those of you that have been paying attention to all the problems we've been doing, whenever we've gotten to the standard rate, I want you to pay very close attention to it. It's been $12, $15, $18 dollars per hour. That's what labor gets. So, you know, you might want to think about uh, how hard you're trying in your courses because, uh, you know, if you don't get out of there with the right, uh, with the right average, you will be labor. <laughs> you won't be management. You'll be labor and you'll be looking at that <laughs> as your income. So, you know, pay attention. All right. During July, 3,400 direct hours, uh, 3,400 hours of direct labor time were recorded. So let's make a note of what our actual uh, quantities are. Actual, we had 3,400 hours of direct labor. We're recorded to make 16,000 units. The direct labor cost totaled 49,300 for the month. So 49,300 for the month. And our output, was 16,000 units. We're not given the rate, the average rate, but again, if we have a total cost number of hours, you can figure that out with division. Most of the time, we don't need the actual rate. So let's see what's required of us. Number one, required. What direct labor cost should have been incurred to make the 16,000 DVD players? By how much does this differ from the cost that was incurred? So number one is just saying how much should have been incurred. So when we're talking about how much should have been incurred, we're talking about standards. Standard quantity times the standard price. So our standard quantity is 0.2 times the actual output, which is 16,000, times the standard price, times 15, uh, will give us $48,000. Now we could have done this directly by just taking the three dollars that we already knew per unit multiplied by the 16. I'm just showing you the long way each time. So we should have occurred $48,000. This ends up being, we actually incurred 49.3, so our standard is $1,300 lower than actual. That was easy enough, right? There we go. There's number one done. Let's look at what number two is asking us to do. Number two, break down the difference in cost from one above into a labor rate variance and a labor efficiency variance. And when we do that, we should get 1300 unfavorable. So across the uh, column, the top of our uh, columns here, what we want is we want our actual quantity times our actual price. We're going to compare that with our actual quantity times our standard price, which in turn will be compared with our standard quantity times our standard price. Here's the nice thing about, uh, about what we have here. We already have 49.3 for our actual quantity times our actual price. Number one already calculated our standard quantity at our standard price at 48,000. We just have to calculate our actual quantity times our standard price. Well, our actual quantity uh, of labor that was used was 3,400. We used 3,400 hours and our standard price was $15. So we multiply that by 15 we get $51,000. So now we're in a position to do our comparisons. Here is our rate variance and this will be our efficiency variance. So 49.3 is what we actually incurred. Based on the standard price it should have been 51 so 
we are favorable by $1,700. Not bad. However, based on the output that we, that we produced, we should have only spent 48, but the actual hours at the standard price were 51, so our efficiency was 3,000 unfavorable. With 1,700 favorable and 3,000 unfavorable, our total variance is 1,300 unfavorable. And does that make sense? Yes, it is. 13 lower than actual, 1,300 unfavorable. There is number two. Let's look at what's required in number three. The budgeted variable manufacturing overhead rate is $4 per direct labor hour. During July, the company incurred $15,640 in variable manufacturing overhead cost. Compute the variable overhead spending and efficiency variances for the month. So let's uh, go ahead and do that. Number three. And I'm not going to rewrite the formulas. I'm just going to carry on here. We're told that our actual cost was $15,640 uh, for the month. We're also told that our standard price, we'll take our actual hours multiplied by our standard price, which was $4 per hour for a total of $13,600. And our standard uh, um, uh, cost would be our standard number of hours at this desired level of output, at, at the true level, the actual level of output. So we take our actual output multiplied by the standard hours allowed, 0.2, and multiplied by the standard overhead rate, $4. So you can see over here, again, I'm going to repeat, this first number we put down is what we actually incurred. The second number we put down is the hours we actually incurred multiplied by the standard price. The third one we put down is the standard hours we should have incurred multiplied by the standard price. So, being that we, these are both the same actual hours, multiply, and this is the actual, the actual price and the standard price, we know that this first one is the price variance. So, our price variance here is 2,040 unfavorable. This is our, 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 sorry, not our price variance, uh, sorry, our spending, spending variance. We should have spent 13600 We spent 15640 2040 unfavorable. And here is our efficiency variance. Now, why do we call it efficiency variance? Because this is related to the amount of hours that are used to apply the overhead. That's all it is. The overhead rate doesn't change. Our spending doesn't change. It's still $4 versus $4 here. All that changes is the actual hours versus the hours that should have been used. So we call that efficiency. So our efficiency variance, I'm sorry, I didn't multiply this out, 12,800. Should have been 12,800, came out at 13,600. That is 800 unfavorable, unfavorable. So across the bottom, we have a total variance in variable overhead of 2,840 unfavorable. So something has to be looked at here. The spending variance is the big one. The efficiency variance is just the difference between how much labor was used versus uh, how much should have been used, and I think we can deal with it up here. Look at our, uh, our uh, labor rate variance is favorable, 1,700. We might have been trying to sneak less experienced employees through to create a favorable rate variance, but look what it did to our efficiency variance, made that unfavorable. That alone will cause an efficiency variance in variable, in variable overhead as well. So this alone will cause this. This is something else. So we got two problems here. We're trying to sneak uh, uh, less experienced people through and saving some money on the labor rate, but their efficiency sucks. And we're spending a little more on variable overhead uh, uh, per labor hour than we really want to. So our costs are somewhat out of control. We could also argue that these less efficient people uh, uh, are using more of the variable overhead per hour than what the standard is. So looking at this, tracing it through, that's a puzzle. By the way, that's what a computer still can't do, is determine what the story is behind all this and then go investigate the facts to verify which one it is. So there we go. There is 10.11. Exercise 10, 12. And I kind of like this one, especially for students to do, because now you have to look at the problem from a different angle. 
and uh, that is how we develop expertise. You're an expert at something when you can look at a problem from multiple different perspectives and still see the solution, as opposed to following it from beginning to end and only knowing how to do it one way. What do we have here? Working backwards from labor variances. Worldwide Credit Card uses standards to control the labor time involved in opening mail from cardholders and recording the enclosed remittances. Incoming mail is gathered into batches and a standard time is set for opening and recording each batch. The labor standards relating to one batch are as follows, and I'll write them out up here, what our standards are so that we see them. And we need a standard for quantity, a standard for price, and then you just multiply the two to get a cost. So we have 2.5 hours at $30, uh, sorry, that's the total at twelve dollars I was gonna say thirty dollars you want to be a batch processor don't you at twelve dollars now you don't want to be one and that's two two point five times twelve is thirty dollars per batch so there's our actual cost that's given to us in the book the record showing the time spent last week in opening batches of mail has been misplaced however the batch supervisor recalls that 168 batches were received and opened during the week. So we have our output is 168 batches were opened during the week. We received an open during the week and the controller recalls the following variance data relating to these batches. So we have a total labor variance of 660 unfavorable and a rate variance of 300 unfavorable. So let's make a note of that. Our average quantity times our uh, uh, actual, sorry, av actual quantity times actual price. We do not know. We just know what our variances are. This will be our actual quantity times standard price, and this will be standard quantity times standard price. And we are told that our tol total labor variance is 660 unfavorable. and that our rate variance, this is our rate variance here, is 300 favorable. So this is all we have to go on. So it's a puzzle, isn't it? Required, number one, determine the number of actual labor hours spent opening batches during the week. Now this can be uh, a rather challenging because we need to know what the actual uh, uh, quantity of hours are that were worked during the course of the week. So what we can do is we can start to fill in things that we know. If this is 300 favorable and this is 660 unfavorable, then this must have been 960 unfavorable. 960 unfavorable plus 300 favorable brings us up to the 660 unfavorable. So this is 960 unfavorable. Now look over here, we have a standard quantity we have a standard price and we know what the output is. So we can calculate this quantity here. So we can calculate standard quantity times standard price. And our standard quantity, we can just go right here. If it's standard quantity times standard price, this is it right here, $30. So this amount here comes to 30 times what the amount of batches we do, 168, will equal 5,040. So we know that this total here is 5,040. Well, for this to be $960 unfavorable, that means that this amount minus 5,040 must have been positive 960, because anything above zero is unfavorable, right? So if we add 960 to the 5,040, we come up with 6,000. So in other words, actual quantity, which is the variable we're looking for, times a standard price. What's our standard price? Our standard price is $12 times $12 must equal 6,000. So our actual quantity must equal 6,000 divided by 12, which equals 500. So the actual amount of hours, there's the answer to number one, the actual amount of hours we use are 500, uh, are 500 hours. Now, that's the short way of doing it. Let me show you the long way of doing it in case you're asked to do it the long way. The long way, number one, is to recognize 
that we have that this amount here is 960 unfavorable. And how do we get that? It's actual quantity times the standard price minus the standard quantity times the standard price would equal 960. So we write that down. Actual quantity times standard price minus standard quantity minus standard price equals 960. Well, the standard price is the common term in both, so we can factor that out. Actual quantity minus the standard quantity times the standard price equals 960. Now we can substitute for what we know in here. Actual quantity minus our standard price is 168 times the 2.5, 2.5 hours per, per output, and we actually did 168. And our standard price is 12 on the outside, 960. As you can see, we have a bunch of knowns and only one unknown, so it's just a little bit of algebraic manipulation. Uh, average quantity minus 420 times 12 equals 960. Divide both sides by 12. Average quantity, sorry, minus 420 will equal 80. Average quantity equals 500. So you can just, rather than work your way backwards through this, you could just go right to the formula and just substitute what in, in what you know. But that seems to be the long way. This here is kind of the shorter way of doing it. What is number two? We'll do it both ways, the long way and the short way. Determine the actual hourly rate paid to employees for opening batches last week. So what do we need to know? We need to know actual price. Well, we know actual quantity. We know standard price and we know standard quantity, but we don't know actual price. So let's try to figure that one out. So the easiest way to do it is to recognize that average uh, actual quantity times actual price equals 5,700. How do we know that? Because this is 6,000. The rate variance is 300 favorable, which means that's negative 300. So this actual quantity times actual price minus 6,000 is negative 300. So this must be 5,700. We should have spent 6,000. We only spent 5,700. That's 300 favorable. Now I can go directly to average quantity times average price is 5,700. Well, I know the actual quantity. We've already figured out is 500. So 500 AP equals 5,700. AP equals $11.40 per hour. There's the short way to do it. The long way without having to go through all this is to recognize number two that actual quantity times actual price minus actual quantity times standard price must equal it's 300 favorable so that's a negative 300. And since the actual quantity is the constant term we can bring that to the outside. We have actual price minus standard price equals negative 300. Substitute in what we know, 500. We don't know the actual price, but we know the standard price is 12 equals negative 300. And expand the term here, 500 AP minus 6,000 equals negative 300. So 500 AP equals 5,700. AP equals 11. 40 per hour. This is just algebra in here. So there are two ways we can do this. We can just start filling in the numbers and working our way backwards till we get every number that we need. And since we're given the standards, all we have to do is just figure out what AQ is, bring the AQ back to our first formula and figure out what AP is. Or we could just go straight to the formulas and use some algebra and come up with an answer. Either way, there you go. Long way, short way, doesn't matter. That's 10.12.